What's going on guys? CH from Homebrew for Life. We're down here in Carlsbad, California. We came across a grapefruit IPA. It goes by the name of Popworks Urban Brewery. We all loved it. We've been drinking it up and down the coast. I figured I gotta talk to the owner. Owner lives in Oregon. Let's go. My name is Christian Ettinger. I'm the brewmaster and founder here at Hopworks Urban Brewery in sunny Portland, Oregon. Been here 10 years, so we're celebrating our 10th anniversary this year in uh, 2018. And uh, it took us about a year and a half to build the place. It's a long gestation on site. Now we've got three locations, another one opening at the airport and the production brewery in the basement. I come from the brew pub background, so I've always enjoyed uh, bringing food and beer together and having a nice gathering place. So within that perspective of brew pub, food was mandatory for me personally. When you see the orders coming in, you know, the first half hour open, it's all our employees, so I know that they enjoy having food on site as well. But we've always had a great mishmash, I call it in and out burger, meats, uh, escape from New York pizza, upscaled with great organic beer on top. Getting a liquor license in Oregon is moderately difficult. It's not that expensive. The city only charges, I think, $250 for the permit, the right to do it. There's a great background check and everything as well, but the reason the scene's vibrant around here is a low barrier to entry. I'm 44 and I've been in beer for half my life. I started out uh, 18 years old as a home brewer. I moved to Germany, Cologne, Germany when I was 19 years old and as an exchange student and fell in love with Kolsch beer and the entire uh, German brewing tradition. And I wanted to bring that back to the US and mix it with this wonderful microbrew scene that was blossoming in Portland between Bridgeport and uh, Widmere and Full Sail and Deschutes and all this wonderful energy and excitement there was in the late 80s about homebrew when I moved to Germany in 93. I knew that's what I wanted to do for life. Came back, I got a brewing internship in 95 my senior year at U of O Business School and to that point I was the first one at U of O to get five college credits for making beer. From there on I was uh, 21 at that point and 44 so I've been working every day diligently trying to advance my my knowledge and skill and, and, uh, and to come up with uh, what 10 years ago became Popworks. We've been refining it along the way. Before Hopworks, I was uh, the uh, brewmaster over at Laurelwood Brewery and I've been making beer for others. I had been making beer for others for about 12 years before I, I jumped off to start my own thing. So I felt it important to gain the confidence on someone else's dime, uh, gain a bit of a uh, in the skill and street smarts and the hopefully a little following that allows you to, to start with a bang versus with a hiss. And so uh, when we opened 10 years ago, there had been very few openings until that point. So we had a, a wonderful opportunity to kind of, you know, really uh, gain uh, some mind share and, and develop nice relationships with our customers and distributors and stuff like that because there hadn't been a lot going on. Fair trade is to coffee, organics is to milk. You know, this B Corp is, is uh, really this eco label, if you will, that really shows your health as your sustainable health as a business, totally, financially, socially, environmentally. Our brewery here at Hopworks is a 20 barrel JV Northwest system. It was Built in 1998, it went out to Cleveland, uh, to Western Reserve Brewery, went to Red Bluff, California, to um, oh, Tuscan Brewery, and then we bought it used, uh, got it for a bargain. Nobody knew uh, 10 years ago what to do with a 20 barrel system. You know, our, I think our production this year will be somewhere around 14,000 barrels of uh, beer made with organic ingredients and certified organics. We have a couple of different ways in which we approach that. But 20 barrel system, I've got nine 80 barrel fermenters, seven, 40 barrel fermenters and one, two, three, and a fourth one coming on in the 20 barrel range. 
Uh, we all, we started with the 20. Oh, you We're did. running our OG system, yeah. Growing as a small brewery now is different uh, than growing as a small brewery when we started. You kind of pick your battles. If you want to go for the brew pub and food on site, you may not have the bandwidth to take on your own distribution. If you're not doing food on site in your tasting room, you might want to think about tackling self-distribution. If you tackle self-distribution, you own the relationships. There's another 28% gross margin that you can split between yourself, your uh, retailer, and your customer uh, so that everybody gets a, a little more profit, which is cool. Mainly controlling those relationships is where the direct-to-consumer uh, thing is, is important. I really uh, think that that's a great opportunity for the startup. Own your relationships, work in a small concentric uh, radius increasing around your plant, and then you have distribution rights that you can sell to a wholesaler if you deem it to be too big a beast for you to handle anymore, but you've got a, then you've got a nice nest egg and you can take that and buy more equipment and, uh, and scale your company up. Maybe get some new brands to market, buy the canning line, whatever. So I think start small, start with uh, focus on, on food or self-distro. If you can do both of those, good on you, but those are three, then you've got three different businesses to wrangle. You know, if you're just making beer, that's pretty simple. If you're just, you know, making food, pretty simple. If you're running trucks as a distro, you're pretty simple. You start smashing two or three of those things together, good luck as a young company, because you're kind of asses and elbows, bootstrap, trying to figure out what to do. And you got too many investors, typically. Also, being quick to market. Our last hazy we made, the Totally Chill can the label, we got that to market in three weeks. We got out of our own way. We found that, you know, you can take you could take three or six months to get a beer to market or a year and ultimately the customer, somebody else is going to eat your lunch. So we found a really neat way. Now we know maybe 30 days if we're up, if we put some gas on it, we can get a new beer to market 30 days in a label. Spend 10% of your week looking down the road to see what's coming and see and maybe invent what's coming through innovation. The biggest move for us is our PDX airport location. It's a really cool and new situation for us. Operating behind uh, airport security isn't easy, so there are partners to help you accomplish that. Uh, and the important thing is for our brand to extend into that environment seamlessly so the customer is uh, really, when they're here at our pub versus at sec behind security, either as a Portland or leaving town or as a maybe um, somebody from out of town coming through Portland, it's a really cool opportunity to play beer ambassador for one of the best beer cities. Wow, one person. I think the first person that gave me my brewing internship in my senior year of business school, uh, David Sohegian, he was the one who had enough faith to hand off just a, a little bit to a, a little bit of responsibility to a, a young kid that was really passionate about beer because it's just the, those little uh, bits of humanity and faith in, in people that, that show some, some potential that you just never know what's going to happen if you give somebody a, a boost, you know, whether it's throwing someone an extra dollar or, uh, you know, helping someone on his trip or giving them an internship or whatever it is, you know, there's just a variety of ways that you can express a little humanity and the right people can take that and hopefully do cool things with it. And I'm really proud of how we approach business and what we've been able to do, but I gotta thank David for, if I didn't have that internship when I was 21 years old, this never would have happened. So I think it really starts there.